Winter is a challenging season, especially in the northern locations, with a snow-covered landscape, shorter days, and below freezing temperatures. It's a wonder how birds manage to survive such harsh conditions, some of which are extremely tiny, causing researchers to scratch their heads in astonishment. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the toughest winter birds of the north and how they've adapted to survive. Enjoy! Measuring around 12 to 17 inches, the willow ptarmigan is on the larger side. They are a grouse mainly found in subarctic tundra, living year-round in places that most other birds can only manage to survive in over the warmer months. This master of camouflage is very well equipped to combat the bitter cold, which can be as low as minus 40 below. They have a double coat of feathers. The inner ones, known as down, traps heat while the outer layer of longer feathers protects it from the wind and snow. They can also fluff them out to create little air pockets of warm air between their body and plumage for further insulation. Another thing that helps these birds is the fact that they have feathers everywhere, on their eyelids, nostrils, and their feet. Every inch of their body is protected. Their feet and legs are very heavily feathered, and this serves as another function for them, snowshoes, which allow them to walk over snow easily. If it gets too cold for these birds, they will burrow into snowbanks, providing more insulation. The temperature inside a snowbank may be as warm as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, while the outside temperature is below 0 degrees Fahrenheit. For this character, being heavily feathered and making good use of snow to burrow in, they make it through the harsh northern winter. Standing on an icy surface or floating in near-freezing water, it is hard not to wonder how ducks and other water birds like gulls can do this without getting frostbite and losing their limbs. Feathers, just as with the ptarmigan, help ducks to stay insulated and protect it from icy cold water, but their feet and legs are fully exposed. So how do they do it? Through a system called countercurrent heat exchange in the legs of cold adapted birds. A group of arteries from the core are intertwined with venous vessels from the feet and legs. As warm arterial blood flowing to the feet passes close to the cold venous blood returning from the feet, the arterial blood becomes cooler and the venous blood becomes warmer. This means that the blood returning to the core is warmed and the warm blood going to the feet is cooled but not to below freezing, keeping the temperature difference between their feet and the icy surface to a minimum therefore significantly reducing the likelihood their feet will freeze, provided the outside environment doesn't get ridiculously cold, that is. And should that happen, there is still one last trick, to raise one foot at a time up into their warm body. Additionally, the feet and legs of birds are mostly bone and tendon, not much muscle or tissue which would require more oxygenated blood, like it is for us. Countercurrent is so effective, researchers discovered that mallards in very cold temperatures lose only around 5% of their total body heat through their feet, even though they are in direct contact with cold water or icy surface. It's a terrific ability. A northern resident measuring around 10 or 11 inches, the Canada jay, is a lot smaller, but this cold weather specialist is so well suited for winter. Living year-round as far north as Alaska, the Yukon, and Northwest Territories, their very thick plumage keeps their body warm, and when puffed up, the feathers cover their legs and feet, providing more protection and insulation. Even their nostrils are heavily feathered. The plumage of Canada jays is so effective at keeping them warm that they will breed in February and March when conditions are still quite frosty. That's how tough they are. Although not equipped to eat native seeds and nuts, its bill is designed well for tearing and twisting the meat off of a carcass. In fall, these small corvids get busy hoarding insects and any carrion they find away into the trees. They rely on the deep cold to preserve their often perishable caches. In a warmer climate, the risk of spoilage threatens its ability to survive. They are very cold adapted. 
All pretty incredible stuff, but the truly remarkable ones are the smaller birds, like chickadees. The black-capped and boreal chickadee live year-round as far north as Alaska, a place that experiences extreme winter weather. Weighing less than half an ounce, how do such dainty birds survive the harsh winter of northern regions? For one, their half-inch coat of insulating feathers helps them maintain body temperatures at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius, even when temperatures dip well below freezing. Even more insulation is provided when a chickadee fluffs out their feathers. The real challenge for these guys, though, is at night, when temperatures usually dip quite low. To combat the cold and reduce body heat lost, chickadees do something that some other species do. Lower their body temperature by as much as 12 degrees. Being in this hypothermic state is a deep sleep called torpor. Lowering their temperature like this reduces the difference between their body temperature and that of the air, so less heat is lost. While in this state, they also burn less of their energy stores. A fascinating thing is that there is a risk that their body temperature could fall too low. However, an internal thermostat kicks in when a critical temperature is reached. When that happens, the large pectoralis flight muscles are signaled, which initiates shivering. This generates heat, helping to raise the bird's internal temperature to a safe level. The shivering stops and then begins again once needed. So some nights in winter, chickadees literally may shiver all night. Pretty touching. I feel for them, all the fight they put in to survive. Typically, chickadees can eat 35% of their body weight each day. However, during very cold weather, they will have to eat an increased amount, consuming more than half their body weight. Due to their extremely fast metabolism, they can put on a significant layer of fat every day and lose all of it overnight. So each morning, they need to replace this fat. In a time when food is scarce, the stakes are high, but luckily for our little buddies, they know how to prepare for this by hiding thousands of food items into the trees during fall. Thanks to having a very good memory, they can remember most of them and collect this food on the short cold days. A very small bird of the extreme cold and dark far winter north, red poles are true survivalists. Weighing roughly 15 grams, they can survive temperatures of nearly minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit. In one day, a red pole needs to eat 40% of their body weight in seeds to stay alive. Can you imagine eating 40% of your body weight each day to survive? Anyway, for this reason, they make sure to select seeds that have the highest calories. Shorter days provide a challenge with obtaining enough food before dark, and in times of heavy snowfall and cold winds, it can prove more difficult to meet the daily nutrition they need. These birds of the Arctic have a solution. Load up their expandable esophagus with as many seeds as possible in a short time, and then fly off to a dense conifer where they can bring up each of these seeds to eat while sheltered from the cold and storm. By staying hidden as they eat their food, they conserve energy. For this reason, they can stay warm for a long time despite the conditions. Furthermore, if needed, just before dark, they can load it up again with food and digest the seeds overnight. Additionally, at night, they will tunnel a foot or more into the snow insulated from the elements. Another way they stay warm is with all of those feathers. In a study in Alaska, it was discovered that red poles put on roughly 30% more plumage by weight in November just before winter hits. Remarkable little birds, and it's hard not to be astonished by how they adapt. Finally, perhaps one of the toughest birds of winter is the golden crown kinglet. Incredibly, these tiny birds weighing 6 grams, equivalent to 2 pennies, winter as far north as Alaska, a very cold place that receives a lot of snow and has really short days. Unlike chickadees and red poles, it's highly unlikely to see these guys at feeders. There is so much working against these little songbirds. Golden crown kinglets are insect eaters and yet do not head for a tropical paradise in winter. They also don't switch to eating seeds and fruit like others of their size, such as chickadees. Although, according to Cornell's All About Birds, they may eat a small number of native seeds from trees, likely just supplemental. Insects are the bulk of their diet in winter, 
and somehow they find enough over the seemingly insect-free cold season to maintain their internal furnace at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The body of these little ones loses heat at a rapid rate, 100 times faster than ours. Each winter day, they need three times their body weight in food to survive. How are they finding enough insects in winter to sustain that? Golden crown kinglets do not give up their secrets easily. Researchers have unlocked some of the mystery, though. For one, the golden crown kinglet has a very good eye and can spot dormant caterpillars and clusters of invertebrate eggs that have attached themselves to pine trees camouflaged as twigs for winter. They are pretty social, flying around the forest with at least another buddy or two or three. That helps when it comes to locating food and evading dangers, and they tend to forage well into dusk. Getting as much food in before night is very important. Their plumage is also thick in winter. Around 8% of their body weight is in feathers, which certainly helps to keep them warm. But how do these tiny creatures survive the long 16-hour winter night of the north? Quite a challenge for a tiny bird that expends so much thermal energy. It was thought that they roost inside tree cavities and probably use torpor. However, one determined man, Bernd Heinrich, a biologist who observed them for years as he tried unlocking the mystery, got lucky one late afternoon and saw three or four birds retreat to a pine. After a little time passed, he climbed up carefully. Remembering the location, he gently pulled open the bough and saw them huddling together for warmth. One of the birds turned its head to look, indicating that they were not in a state of torpor, but instead shivering the night away while protected inside a pine and using one another's heat to get through. Truly a heart-touching thing. The fact they are so tiny, do not take advantage of feeders, at least not commonly, don't switch to eating a vegetarian diet, and seemingly avoid using torpor on winter nights gives these little songbirds, at least to my mind, the tough bird status. Survivalists through and through. How some of these birds have adapted to survive in such extreme conditions is nothing short of remarkable and humbling. Do you agree that the Golden Crown Kinglet is a pretty remarkable winter survivalist? Who do you think is a stronger survivor? Comment below, and thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy birding!